religious producer day. In the hearts of people, light the lamp of hope. Make every piece of this beautiful garden, which is our world, strive to do good work. Assalamu alaikum and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Arshia Hasnayn. On behalf of the Human Development Foundation Chicago Network, I welcome you to our 18th annual Community Awareness and Fundraising Dinner. We hope you have enjoyed the reception outside, the silent auction, and dinner. And I guess some of you are still enjoying dinner right now. Thank you all for being here. Your support is important because it allows HDF to successfully implement its programs in Pakistan. HDF helps people that want to help themselves to fight extreme poverty with respect and dignity. We implement our powerful model focused on lasting change in five key areas. Education, healthcare, economic growth, social mobilization, and sustainability. You are our source of funds and your participation here with us together help the poorest of the poor in Pakistan. The funds that we ask you to donate tonight enable us to succeed in the work that you support. Our theme today is Alama Iqbal's vision for a successful Pakistan. While everyone in attendance today is most important to us at HDF and is certainly worthy of respect for helping Pakistan become a better place, we would like to acknowledge with gratitude the presence today of the Right Honorable the Baroness Warsi, our honored guest speaker today, and the representative of the Office of Governor Rauner of Illinois. Our program tonight is as follows. The evening will start with the Lava of Qurani Park, to be followed by a message from the Office of Governor Rauner of Illinois. We will then enjoy a video on Allama Iqbal's vision for a successful Pakistan. This should set the stage for our honored guest speaker of the evening, Baroness Warsi. We look forward to her talk with great anticipation. After that, we will have a presentation to update everyone on HDF's work, which will include a video presentation and fundraising. This will lead in the entertainment section of the evening with singer Bilal Khan. Let us begin our evening with the Lawat of Qurani Park by a member of HDF family, Hafiz Azhar Gumra. Stop. 
استطاع إليه سبيلا ومن كفر فإن الله غني عن العالمين صدق الله العظيم Join me in welcoming on stage Mr. Dennis Jun, representative of the Office of Governor Rauner of Illinois, with a message from the Governor. For the Human Development Foundation's annual fundraising dinner. Since its inception in 1997, the Human Development Foundation has helped more than 350,000 underprivileged people throughout all provinces of Pakistan. Embodying the philosophy of helping people help themselves, HDF has empowered communities by developing a variety of leadership programs and have built healthcare facilities, open schools, constructed dams and water pumps, built roads, and created microcredit programs to assist with local economic growth. The work of this wonderful organization would not be possible without the support of events such as this, the proceeds of which, which will benefit HDF's ability to transform lives through a variety of services. On behalf of the people of Illinois, I offer my best wishes for an enjoyable and memorable event. Sincerely, Bruce Rauner, Governor of the State of Illinois. Thank you. With sincerity. Digar goon hai jahaan, taaron ki gardish tez hai saafi. Digar goon hai jahaan, taaron ki gardish tez hai saafi. Dile har zarra mein hoogai rasta khiz hai saafi. The world around us is moving fast and things are changing. Each one of us knows in our heart clearly which way we have to go. Let us now dim the lights so we can watch a video on the evening's theme, Alama Iqbal's vision for a successful Pakistan. This video is a labor of love and the humble production of the HD of Chicago Network. Let us walk you through the work that HDF does, accompanied by the deep, visionary, and inspirational message of Iqbal's poetry.
I would now like to ask Dr. Nahid Kayu, member of HDF Board of Directors, to please come up on stage to introduce our keynote speaker this evening, Baroness Sayyida Marsi. A businesswoman, a campaigner, and a cabinet minister. Inducted into the House of Lords in 207, she was the first Muslim to serve in the British cabinet and the foremost Muslim politician in the Western world. In 2010, appointed as the chairman of the Conservative Party and the first Asian to chair a major political party in Britain, a senior minister of state at the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, a minister of faith and communities. In August 2014, she designed for government, citing the government's morally indefensible policy on Gaza because, and I quote, I want to be able to live with myself after politics. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you. One of the five girls born to immigrants of Pakistani origin in Dewsbury, West Yorkshire, daughter of a hard-working father. She was raised with values of freedom, responsibility, and aspiration. Always a community volunteer and a staunch believer in social justice, she found, she's the founder of Savera Foundation, providing economic empowerment to destitute women with skills development and education programs in Pakistan. Ladies and gentlemen, Please help me welcome this politically iconic Iron Lady who has been compared to Margaret Thatcher, who is a wife, a mother, and above all, a kind, gentle human being with a soft heart and an infectious smile. Her Ladyship, the Baroness Saida Warsi. as we were having something to eat. Uh, and I realize that uh, so many of you, of course, are from Pakistan, but there are also a few of you uh, that are from the Patwar region of Pakistan, which is where I come from. So the question I was asking today was, uh, which language should I speak in? Of course, English is my main language. I was born and raised in the United Kingdom. But some people were saying that you should speak Urdu. We have heard your interviews. तो आपको यहाँ पे उस ज़बान में बात करनी चाहिए जो हमें सबसे मीठी लगती है। तो I said maybe we could do that लेकिन when I spoke to my पटवारीज़ they said अगर सही कल करनी तो अपनी ज़बान इश्क करें ताकि उन्हें कि पता चले कि पटवार। So I hope ladies and gentlemen you bear with me we kind of twist between the languages and I hope you bear with me and understand English. In the way English should be spoken. <laughs> uh, one of the way, that, one of the things that I was told about the Chicago crowd was uh, that you have a load of bright people here. So I walked in and I was introduced to a physician, and then I was introduced to a physician, <laughs> and then I was introduced to a physician. But finally, ladies and gentlemen. Came across somebody who wasn't a physician and uh, he was a banker. Uh, Jafar Hussain, by if you can put his hand up, I hope he's still here. Jafar. So I said to Jafar, by tell me, you know, Chicago's is a is at stake here. Tell me what's two plus two. And he said, uh, say that bankers don't have a great reputation. In fact, uh, after 2008, you have a worse reputation than politicians, however. He said, bankers don't have a reputation, but I can answer that question. Two plus two is four. I thought, he's a good banker, he knows his figures. But I thought, I need to try this once again. And I approached a phenomenal young woman, a lawyer, Nabila Rashid. Is Nabila still here? Can she put her hand in? Hi, Nabila. <laughs> Nabila's my grind, by the way. Uh, no, just because she's from the United Kingdom. And I said to Nabila, what's two plus two? Uh, 
uh, convinced me that Chicago is bright. And she said, look, Saeed, this is a social setting. If I give my legal advice, I'm not liable for anything that may come from that. I absorb any responsibility that may come of my advice, but two plus two is four. And I thought, right, lawyer. And I thought, I need to try this one more time, just to convince myself that Chicago knows what it's doing. And I came across an accountant, a Faf Kayou. Is a Faf still here? Where's a Faf? Hi. And I said to her, Faf, tell me, Faf, what's two plus two? She says, I'm an accountant, I'm an auditor. Say that, what would you like it to be? <laughs> so, incredibly impressed by uh, the people of Chicago. But I want to speak today, ladies and gentlemen, about, two th about three things. About opportunity, about principles and values, and about faith. And I hope you will bear with me if I talk about those issues in the light of my own journey and my own story. I was born in 1971. Uh, I was the second of five girls. Uh, I was born at a time when my father was a worker in the textile mills in the north of the United Kingdom. And uh, I had what we would describe as a typical working class, uh, Pakistani Muslim upbringing. Things got better. Uh, I must have bought my parents good luck because after a few years uh, my father's life changed and he became a bus conductor. Uh, things became a little bit better, he became a bus driver and then eventually he started uh, a small business and humbly turned it into a multi-million pound outfit over his lifetime. But in growing up, the one thing that they wanted for us was the opportunity that the United Kingdom provided and the opportunity of an education. Uh, so we were all sent off to university. Uh, now, we were of the generation, and I look at some of the younger people here, we were of the generation when, where your career, in fact, not just your career, your career and your husband were chosen by your mom. And uh, I remember sitting down at the age of uh, 15, uh, and my mom lined us all up, and she talked about the decent professions and she said I'd like you to be a teacher, a lawyer, a doctor, an accountant and a pharmacist and that's what we went on to do. She handed out our careers to us. I went on to specialise in law, I specialised in uh, criminal defence and I was part of what could be described as the race world, the racial justice world. What radicalised my generation was the colour of our skin. And having fought those battles and starting to come to terms with the fact that you could be comfortably Asian or Black and British, things started to change. And when people say that a single event can change the course of your life, then for me certainly September the 11th did that. Because after that date, despite the fact that it happened here in the US, not in the United Kingdom, I was no longer Asian and British or Pakistani and British. I was now Muslim and British. And the challenges of identity started all over again. And I wasn't sure whether I wanted to fight those battles again. And so I took the easy route. I sold my legal practice that I had at the time. I picked up my little girl and I traveled to the only other place where I thought I could potentially make a home. And that was back to the villages where my parents had originated from many, many decades ago. And when I went to Pakistan, uh, this uh, great idealism of what Pakistan was all about. And of course, whilst I saw the real beauty of Pakistan, I had the opportunity to travel in Pakistan. Uh, I have some very interesting neoconservative <coughs> friends in the, in the United Kingdom. And when I tell them that uh, during that time I traveled to Abdullah, I have to convince them I did not see Osama bin Laden during that time. When I tell them that I travelled in uh, KPK, I have to convince them that I was not being radicalised at that time. Um, and when I tell them that I met some very interesting figures, I have to go on to convince my neoconservative friends that does not therefore make me a sleeper cell for Al-Qaeda. But uh, having spent a year in Pakistan, I realised that some of the most marginalised people in Pakistan 
were the women. And not just the women, but the widows, the divorcees, and the orphan girls, those that were considered to be the most marginalized part of even uh, women in Pakistan. And it's at that point that we set up the Sabera Foundation, which works specifically with those women to economically empower them. But having spent time away, I realized that I needed to come back and play my part in the United Kingdom. Uh, I stood uh, for office in 2005, and uh, soon after that, I met uh, a young man uh, called David Cameron. He went on to become the leader of the uh, Conservative Party, and then subsequently went on to become Prime Minister. And when he became Prime Minister, he asked me to uh, join his cabinet and to chair the Conservative Party. Now, things like that don't happen to people like me. I don't think as the daughter of an immigrant mill worker, I thought in 1971 that one day I would grow up to become a member of the British cabinet. And I can honestly, hand on heart, ladies and gentlemen, say that it was probably one of uh, the best moments for me uh, in terms of my career. And I think that I thought that it was the best moment for me in terms of my career. And I think that it was the so I think this is not a doubt that this was a very big moment for me. But the one thing that I was convinced of is that you should not forget your values and your values. You should test your values and values constantly. But I think for me the biggest test was 2014. Last year, about a year ago. Uh, was that, uh, I was a minister in the foreign office, I was the deputy foreign minister. Uh, I was the minister with responsibility for the United Nations, uh, for the International Criminal Court, um, and I was the minister with responsibility for human rights and most other things. And the Gaza conflict was raging. And on a daily basis, I was having to stand up in the House of Lords, and I was having to give the government's account of our view on what was happening in Gaza, where we had little regard for innocent lives being lost, little regard for human rights and humanitarian law that was being broken, little regard for calling to account internationally what was happening in the Middle East. And there were two moments which really made me decide that I needed to take a stance. One, the three boys playing football on the beach. Now, every mother will tell you that uh, and those skinny legs that come out at the bottom of shorts were the skinny legs of those boys, and those skinny legs looked like the skinny legs of my boys. Another time, another place, they could have been my boys. And I just felt that at that time, not even to find the words to condemn what was going on, was morally indefensible. We then had a second moment. A time where we went to the Human Rights Council, there was a resolution that was passed about accountability for any war crimes that may be committed during the Gaza conflict. And Britain, Britain the defender of human rights, abstained. Now, don't get me wrong, the US did a lot worse. You voted against it. But we abstained. That was us saying we are not prepared even to take a moral position when clearly there have been breaches of international law and war crimes that are being committed. And at that point, I had a choice. Do I simply stay on? in one of the best jobs that I could ever be doing around that cabinet table at the heart of the government, at the heart of power in the United Kingdom? Or do I actually face up and live up to my values and principles and say that I must speak out? And in speaking out, I must walk away. And at that point, ladies and gentlemen, I felt the only decision to take was to walk away. Uh, 
people, as you said, for me what mattered at that point was that long after politics had come and gone, I wanted to be able to live with myself and say, Kimera Zimir Mubrin hai, ke us vat jo fesla kiya tha, wo sahi tha. Every single day since that day, I wake up in the morning and say, Alhamdulillah, and if I can talk about the third thing that I want to talk about, Alhamdulillah, ke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ne mujhe iman diya tha. Ke iman humari zindgi mein abhi bhi important hai, hum sab logo ke liye. Because faith is the thing that makes you realize that uh, the life that we have here is temporary. However much we feel that we are accountable to the people around us and the people that we work for, we are also accountable to a much greater being. And it is that accountability to that much greater being that we are here today. Because how we have come to eat for the we have to meet with friends, we have to meet with friends. But actually, we are here because Allah has given us the opportunity that we can put our own part in what we have to do in the HDF campaign and the HDF campaign. Now, I want to end on two things. I know that this is going to be a fundraiser. I know that you will be able to donate a little bit. Please donate, give us a little bit more, pledge something. And I know that some people will give a little and some will give a little bit more and then eventually some slogan will be going to be able to say, you know, come on, let's get on with it. We've had this part of the, the section. Gaane sunne hai. Like, and I think at that point, let me remind you of this. I don't know ki aap ki zindhiyaan kis tarah ki hai, aap ki backgrounds kis tarah ki hai. Like, and I can definitely say about my life. You know, 20, 30 years ago, my father was a bus driver, 40 years ago he was a factory worker and 60 years ago he was a, a young boy who could not afford shoes to wear to school. Like an Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed his life or unho ne mere abu jan ko or hume dene wala bina diya hai. Is kamre mein hum sab dene wale hai or wahaan pe dunya mein kuch ho log hai jo lene wale hai. उनमें से हम भी हो सकते थे मैं डेफिनेटली सोचती हूँ कि मैं हो सकती थी एक किस्मत का फैसला था जिसकी वजह से अल्लाह सुबह तारा ने हमें देने वाले बना दिया है और अगर आप सोचते हैं कि देना जो है शायद आप नहीं दे सकते जस्ट इमेजिन फॉर मेरी वॉट इट लाइक्स टू बी वॉट इट मस्ट बी लाइक टू बी है देना बड़ा आसान है एंड आई होप आज आप सोचेंगे कि देना बहुत ही आसान है और आप देख फोल के देंगे। आखिर आई वांट टू एंड ऑन दिस के हम से ऐसे जानों को ईगो मसाज हमारा जब आप लोग करते हैं तो अच्छा लगता है। यू नो वी लव कमिंग टू दिस फंक्शंस। वी लाइक टू हैव आई ईगोस मसाज यू टेल अस नहीं बाजी यहाँ पे आके उन्होंने देखो मेरी कितनी तारीफें की हैं। यू नो हमें इतना अच्छा लगता है कि आखि� uh, in fact, I even traveled on September the 11th to the United States to have the Hebrew say nice things about me. Lekin kabi kabi jo hai, you need to be brought back down to earth. And uh, I remember ke, uh, not so long ago, I was on a train from London. My father's Yorkshire Jai, that's where I live. And uh, I was on my way back and I got onto the train, train carriage and I sat down. And I was on the train and he turned around and he said to me, are you uh, Baroness Valsi? And uh, I said, to him, yeah, I thought TV would take And so I thought, yeah, of course I am. I thought, yes, you know. And I said, of course I am. I said, how, how do you know? And he says, he says it on the security badge that you're wearing. <laughs> uh, I think we need moments like that. Uh, thank you very much, ladies.
with basic health care, where clean water is not a luxury. No, sorry, where clean water is not a luxury. Um, and providing an environment where communities are vibrant and self-sustaining. HDF takes a holistic approach in targeting five areas. Healthcare, education, social mobilization, economic development, and sustainable environment. Because of your donations, HDF has been able to enroll 10,000 children in schools each year, develop 287 village development organizations, helped in decline of infant mortality from 85 to 23 per thousand births, develop 862 drinking water projects, trained over 11,000 in vocational training, over 1 million people benefit from HDF's holistic model. And it's thanks to you guys. Before I hand the microphone to Amman, I once again thank you for your continued support. And together we can make a difference. Thanks. I'm here to tell you what an awesome organization HDF is. So one of the most common questions, probably one of the most common questions that people ask is, why HDF? I mean, there are other organizations, um, and how much of my money goes towards, um, you know, administration, how much goes into events like this, and how much towards the programs, as you can see, 86% uh, goes towards the programs, 5% goes into events like this, and the rest into office work or administration. Um, and it's because of this that organizations like charity, um, uh, organizations like uh, Charity Ignite has ranked us with uh, four stars, which is the highest, and uh, with 100% accountability and transparency, which means there are lots and lots of checks and balances. That includes the US government, that includes the uh, uh, government of uh, Pakistan, that also includes our national board members, which I ensure you is free of. Um, so, and of course there are other organizations as well. Um, I think uh, we have a gold star um, and we have other uh, rankings as well. So, what's the whole purpose of this slide? The whole purpose is that when you write your checks, be ensured that HDF is an organization you can trust. Um, we have been here for a long time, and uh, honestly speaking, we perform way above most of the other non-profit. Together, we can make an even bigger impact. Now, first of all, I would like to thank you, each and every one of you who have supported us. We already have made a bigger impact. This is the next step. How do we get even bigger than what we are right now? We couldn't have been what we are without your support. So, one way is I know this is a fundraising event. We're going to ask you for money and funds. But I think Equally important is advocating HDF. HDF is a movement, it's not just an organization. It's a human development movement. We need people to advocate HDF. We need to see new faces in our uh, chapters. Uh, we need to see proper support from, not only from physicians, but other professions as well. I know most of our uh, board members are physicians, but we need, I mean, I personally am from IT, uh, and I'm a volunteer. And I'm spending my Sunday with you guys, and as everyone else is. You know, that's really amazing, first of all. Um, but it's, it's really important that we make a bigger impact. And what better than uh, advocating HDF? 
you know, it's it's great when you do a good deed, but I think it's equally important when you advocate a good deed. Okay. With that, I'd like to uh, uh, introduce uh, Fatma Hussain and Jamal Berkey. But before they come on the stage, we have a video where you will hear from uh, some of our beneficiaries about our programs. Thank you. you near him. HCF is a beautiful charity organization. Please be generous in your donations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, before we start the actual event, I just want to share some ground rules. Uh, we are raising funds for three programs. Fatma's going to Somebody? 
my apologies. I do want to tell you that most of you know that the idea of HDF was conceived in your time. This is where the idea was conceived and this is the town that has nurtured HDF. This is the 18th consecutive year that you have been coming together to support us and we are very grateful to you for having done that. I'm also pleased to tell you that the inspiration so far today for this event are in excess of $200,000. So thank you all very much for your tremendous support. And, but, you know, I'll let Jamal and Fatma decide when they will let you listen to the music. Uh, maybe they want you to raise it a little bit more. Uh, so please keep writing the checks. And in one more time, thank you for all the support that you have given HDF for these 18 years. And thank you for those, the future of HDF and introducing them to the community. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have one more donation of thousand dollars from uh, Ali and Hamida Mustani. Thank you, Ali. Appreciate it. Okay, let's see. More checks coming. Can you get more? Thanks, guys. Thank you very much, Hina. We have a $1,500 donation from Hina Raza. Right now we're at 500 for for Olama Akbal's charcoal sketch. Do I have a 700? Okay. We have a 700. Okay, 700. We're at 700. Anyone for 900 for the charcoal sketch for Alama Iqbal? It's a beautiful piece. We are at 700. Anyone 900 for, for the portrait? Okay. okay, I think wait one, two, three, I think you got it. 700. Thank you. Thank you very much.
that education is a social leveler. It really depends the quality of people that you can send to the very top. As was said by Baroness Varsi that her father started from a very humble beginning, so did my grandfather. And it was only through education that she became a Baroness and I happen to be a councillor here. Only through education. And that's the spirit of this HDL. And secondly, she is an inspirational figure, both in terms of her achievement as a Minister of State for Foreign Affairs and Commonwealth, as well as for taking a principal stand. And I would urge all of you, especially the younger generation of Pakistani Americans, to follow her footsteps. Because as long as you are not into politics, into mainstream media, someone else will define you. So if you want to define yourself in the greater American society, you have to get inspiration and you have to have leadership like her. It was a great evening and I would like to commit all of them for making it such a great, uh, wonderful evening. Thank you so much. I would like to invite